welcome to the universe. In it, you will find our planet, Earth. The Earth is composed of multiple systems that interact to make life possible. Like and subscribe for cheesy intro. Let's take a cross section of the planet. You'll note it is composed of a solid inner core, a liquid outer core, and then there's the mantle, which is, well, liquid in some places, solid in others, but nonetheless, it is plastic, which means it can move around. And then finally, all the way at the top is the crust. What I want to do is zoom into the crust to look at the geology that happens there. An important cycling of matter that occurs on the ground is the rock cycle, which goes through the process of how rocks are formed and changed. Let's begin with igneous rocks. Igneous rocks are formed when magma cools after erupting from a volcano. Like the video is showing you. There are many different types of igneous rocks, and where they cool is important. Igneous intrusive rocks cool slowly underground and actually generally result in very pretty looking rocks with crystals in them. Igneous extrusive rocks cool very quickly above ground and are typically less dense. Igneous rocks, when exposed to air and water, can be weathered and eroded into small sediments. As layers of these sediments build up, the pressure caused by the weight of the material above them compact them into sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks have these neat stratified layers that is probably their most notable feature. Sedimentary rocks can also be weathered back into sediments. Now, I want you to keep this weathering of rock in mind for later in this unit. It's an important part of soil formation, and we'll learn about that in a later video. As more pressure builds up, sedimentary rocks under immense heat and pressure turn into metamorphic rocks. Similarly, igneous rocks can also be converted into metamorphic in the same way. Metamorphic rocks generally don't have those neat, even layers because they've generally been distorted when they were squeezed under pressure. And of course, not to be forgotten, metamorphic rocks can also be weathered into sediments. Well, let's take this process to the next logical extreme. What happens when you apply even more heat and pressure to metamorphic rocks? Oh, well, by that time, you're actually very deep in the earth and it would melt into magma. Of course, the magma can then cool slowly or quickly into the different types of igneous rocks. We've talked about rocks exploding out of volcanoes or being pushed deeper underground, but let's actually take a look at why that happens. And for that, we'll have to go back to our planet model and let's look at how our crust interacts with the mantle below it. Let's zoom into the mantle and see what's happening. Material that is closest to the core gets heated. And as objects get warmer, their density decreases. Well, this causes that hot material to move up towards the surface. Well, now that we're at the surface, we're far away from the core and all of its heat. So this material cools off. And as objects get cooler, their density increases. And this causes materials to sink back down. This rising and cooling trend is called a convection cycle. And it creates these moving pockets of mantle material pretty much all over the Earth. These convection cycles in the mantle is what causes the crust to move. But what's important to understand is that our crust is not one giant piece of rock. It's composed of large slabs that we call tectonic plates. 
and these plates move around in all sorts of directions. So let's take a look at what happens as these plates move. Plates can move towards each other, plates can move away from each other, or they can slide alongside each other. So let's start by taking a look at what happens when plates move toward each other. This region is called a subduction zone because one plate is subducting below the other. The plate that is denser will sink below the less dense plate. Oceanic crust tends to be denser than continental crust, so this is something that's very common along coastlines. The continental crust, which is less dense, will remain above. Let's take a look at what happens when two plates move away from each other. The region where this happens is a divergent boundary, as well, two plates are diverging from each other. A geographic feature that occurs here is a ridge. And out of this ridge, a slow trickle of magma will cool into a new crust. Let's move away from this simple model into something a little bit more complex. I want to zoom in once more into subduction zones. As one plate slides below the other, it actually pulls a little bit of the continental plate below and causes it to kind of fold downwards at the edge. This sinking creates a trench, and trenches are some of the deepest places in the world as a result of this inward folding. Also along subduction zones, you'll notice a lot of volcanoes. Because of all the pressure caused by the subducting plates, magma is forced upwards. If enough of this pressure builds up, a volcano can form. A great example of this is around the Pacific Ocean, where the Pacific plate subducts under many other plates. This collection of volcanoes is what we call the Ring of Fire. Let's go back to our full model and zoom into the third type of plate boundary. A transform boundary occurs when two plates move alongside each other. As these plates move alongside each other, it's very common for earthquakes to happen as one plate slips forward. A very popular transform boundary is the San Andreas Fault in California. One last feature of plate tectonics I want to look at is a hotspot. Now, a hotspot is a region where the mantle is hotter than the surrounding mantle, usually due to some freshly heated magma flowing upwards on a convection cycle. There can also be a hot spot in an area where the crust is particularly weak in some spot. Um, whatever the reason, they're called the same thing, uh, a hot spot. These hot spots can result in the formation of islands. Hawaii, for example, is an island created by a hot spot. Let's look at the process. The location of the hot spot in the mantle doesn't actually change. What happens is the plate above it is moving. But plates move very slowly, so it allows a buildup of magma to cool. As the plate moves along, the initial island moves with it. This then causes another buildup of fresh island. This process continues as the island chain is formed. Before I end the video, I want to acknowledge how brief our discussion of geology was. These are just the basic principles that describe the phenomena in the Earth that we observe. The physics and chemistry behind these processes is incredible and worth deeper study but it is beyond the scope of this class. Regardless, this class rocks! The Ring of Fire.